Let's talk about love, art, life with your host, Afro Queen. Surely don't want to miss part two of Let's Talk About Love, Art, Life with Obi West. Heaven cracked open. An exposed magnum opus is beautiful. It was a floating lotus and they named it melanin. Heaven cracked open and deposited a goddess opposite of everything said to be positive and they named it melanin. Heaven cracked open and upon us poured this incomparable opulence as perfect as humanly possible and they named it melanin. Heaven cracked open and let loose an onslaught of awesomeness rendering all over all who saw it and they named it melanin. There's a tint in your skin that make eyes want to camp out. So when you see them looking hard, just disregard. Their hateful face is merely a facade. They're simply wishing they could use their stairs to climb to your level. Despite the stress, you have been blessed with a beauty that's deeper than the temporary deeds of a tanning bed. You are skin goals for those who oppose you. Heaven cracked open and out came floating a complexion too complex for scientists to dissect. Diluted with Egyptian DNA, the beauty flows like the Congo, if melanin was a melody, I would have changed my ringtone for your skin tones. So when you called my phone, I can black out over the sound of your blackness. And no matter who puts you on their black list, just remember that you're a black miss and it's damn near blasphemous to refer to you as anything other than beautiful. Heaven cracked open and we knew that God wasn't joking when he devoted to creating a skin tone so potent. Your shade is amazing. Like a beach umbrella. Whether you're red, bone, bone marrow, beige, or Batman, black, you are still groundbreaking. You are a dandelion grown in dirty water. And despite the harsh conditions, you have been blossomed to be breathtaking. No matter where I take you, you are the talk of the town. If we tour China, their population instantly becomes paparazzi. They're popping pictures because your complexion is more popular than their president. You are perplexing like a word problem with no punctuation. The color wheel would be a mere hubcap without you. Heaven cracked open and out came a creation created by the hands of magic, a beautiful black bird hatched into bad luck. But now the world badly wants your look. Melanin. Hey, amazing. And grateful that I got all this melanin. <laughs> Makes me really happy. Oh, yes. I mean, I was talking about how dense your poetry is with content. You're saying so much and it's all meaningful. It's not just a bunch of words just strung together, but the messages are there. And I just um, feel like your approach is really assertive and focused and intentional and directed directly at the listener's perception. Like you're trying to say, look at this again. Whatever this is I'm talking about, I need you to reconsider this thing. And after a poem, I'm usually doing just that. I'm either reconsidering the topic or saying, oh, I never even thought of that. Um, it definitely, you know, shifts energy. And I know it shifts energy in the room when you are doing live performances. I just, I can already imagine that. Um, but my question for you is, where do you, where do you see yourself going? What is your trajectory with your art? Do you have one? Good question. And I um, hope this doesn't sound too PC, but this is my real answer. My my trajectory pretty much is is aligned with the art form, right? I understand that poetry isn't a genre of art that is appreciated or even recognized like the other genres of art, R&B, hip hop, even art, right? I've never seen someone pay as much for a poem as they have for a, a drawing or a painting. So for me, my ultimate goal as it pertains to this art form is to contribute. Contribute to help pushing this art form to the point to where it's a household name. It's garnering the recognition that it's deserved. It's um, it's listened to. Because with poetry, 
a rap song. We'll take a rap song, for example, right? Mm -hmm. A rap song is about three minutes long. A poem is about three minutes long. When a rap song starts, there's about 20 seconds of just music. Then someone starts rapping for about 30 seconds. And then there's another 20 seconds of a chorus. And then someone raps for about 30 seconds. And then there's, so during that entire time where there's music, rap, a chorus, a poet is saying something, right? So we're able to write about three rap songs and the amount of words that we put into one point. So there's a whole lot being said and the people who have chosen to, to use this art form are some of the most intelligent people in the world. So it's no way that we don't deserve to be heard on a larger scale, right? So my trajectory is, is aligned with that, is being able to contribute, play my part in pushing this genre um, way further so that we're not known as the starving artists, right? It's, it's common knowledge. No one wants to pay us for what we do. So we have assumed the misnomer as being a starving artist, right? R&B singers don't have to starve. Rappers don't have to starve. We shouldn't have to do poetry as a pastime when we're off work. We should be able to do poetry as work, right? So yeah. that's my goal to, to see if, if, to help us get there. <clears throat> now, in light of that, which I want to immediately jump on that and be like, yeah, you're absolutely right, but then part of me puts on the brakes and says but if we do that what will we lose as poetry because when you look at rap when you look at what has happened to hip hop mm -hmm. when you look at all of our art forms that get co-opted and commercialized and then watered down how do you not fear that for poetry um, I don't fear it. I think that we have control of that, right? I think it's, it's our responsibility to stay true to what's innate to us. When rap first started, we're talking about, when well, I'm from the West Coast, so I'm going to reference the West Coast rappers. We're talking about NWA. We're talking about all these times where I don't, I don't want to make it seem like it's not the case today, where social justice was real big um, in the urban community. They felt like they was being mistreated by the police. So that's what they grew up talking about. They were, um, they were redlining where people were excluded to excluded to one area or limited to just being in one area as a result of that um jobs weren't there education wasn't there so they start attacking each other in order to obtain whatever they needed to be and they rapped about that and then other because it was successful other rappers from that point on even to now just followed that cycle even if that weren't their life it became the formula for what was successful but right now we're in a space we can create our own formula Anything we say can become our formula. We don't have to fall in line with a mold that's already created. We can create our own. And ultimately, it's going to be our individual responsibility to not allow what we say to be dictated. And um, so I think, I don't, I don't know if we should accept being considered as second and third class artists and being okay with people not willing to pay us because we don't want to fight the fight that's necessary in order for us to to do it without it being diluted. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> any artist of any art form um, who has inspired you mm -hmm. in your life, not even just to write poetry, but to do anything in your life, who's right. on your list? That's tough. Um, my list of inspiration. I'm inspired. Or I'm assuming, I'm sorry, I'm assuming that you, you have artistic inspirations and maybe they're not artists, so whoever. Yeah, but for me, it's not it's not all bottled into a person. It's it's bottled into situations. Like I've okay. been inspired by, by my screw ups. I've been inspired by, um, when I grew up, I didn't, I didn't have parents who had financial intelligence. They just didn't grow up in the era to where money was was accessible so how do you get intelligent with something you don't even touch that often you know what i mean so right. being able to see people from that generation who was able to find a way to self-educate themselves develop some type of financial intelligence and teach that to their like people like people who have done who i watch who do things like that i might not even know their name but i heard a story so those type of things inspired me what i mess up um people who do great jobs at certain things maybe a conversation 
one conversation from a person who's never said anything else that I was interested in, that one conversation may have inspired me. So my inspiration comes from a wide array of places versus just being bottled up in one person. That's the reason I just can't shoot you a name. Hope okay. that makes sense. No, absolutely. It absolutely makes sense. Before we eventually run out of time, I definitely want to touch on and want you to talk um, about what is your work with your work around shifting the climate around sexual assault and harassment is very important to you. So what can you tell us about that? Okay, I'm an advocate, um, just like you said, for sexual assault and harassment prevention. So I travel around to primarily federal government organizations like the military, um, even colleges, they call me there and I talk about sexual assault and harassment prevention, but I hold these conversations through poetry. So you have professors, you have speakers who show slides, and then a slide has a topic and then they elaborate on the topic. I don't use slides, I introduce the topic with a poem and then we discuss, and then a poem and then we discuss. So it's just introducing a different way to intake a conversation and it's it's a way that people pay way more money for education than they do for entertainment, right? You can go to any comedy club and get in for $20, but you can go to a seminar for one day and pay $1,000 because they know you're going to monetize that information. So being able to use poetry for education has allowed me to make a living off of it um, because I've been blessed enough to be able to use it in a different dynamic versus just for entertainment in a night nightlife event. Advocacy is very important to me. I grew up in an abusive household, right? So I saw violence. And as a child, I had to make the hard decision of trying to figure out what love was based off what I witnessed. And I've never really had an outlet for this. When I started doing poetry in 2011, after about a year, I looked back over my catalog and a lot of those poems were addressing abuse, sexual violence, um, even abuse as far as eating disorders. So I started writing about all types of abuse subconsciously. I didn't sit down and say, today I'm gonna write about this. You know, you hear something, you write it down, then the next line comes before you know it, you have a poem. So there was someone who found me and said, hey, listen, I have an organization that needs that information can you please put it in a way so that it's digestible by this audience? And I did it, it worked, so I, I kept doing it. So it was, it's, in a nutshell, it was something that I was serious about when I grew up, that I actually had a disdain for abuse. I started doing poetry. It's a depiction of life, so the poetry started addressing that abuse, and then somebody showed me how I could use it for education. So that's become my... Uh, that's my contribution. That's my tithes, right? That's my contribution to the world. Is addressing everything. Was it particularly hard to address that topic in the military? No, not for me. It wasn't. It wasn't difficult. It's a requirement, right? It's an annual requirement. In most professions, the annual requirement that you talk about these things. But a lot of times, they speak about these requirements kind of in the check the block. If somebody, one of my employees do something wrong, they harass somebody, I need to be able to say, I told them not to, that way the company doesn't get sued, you just deal with them as an individual. So everybody get on the computer, log in, look at these little things, and then you click off and come sign this paper saying you did it. That's what it, that's what it was, and that's where it is in a lot of places. So being able to, because it's not a it's not a fun topic. Nobody's volunteering to come here about sexual assault and harassment, right? So you got to figure out a way to attract people to topics that are necessary but not fun mm. and poetry helped help me do that so it wasn't it wasn't hard to do from that standpoint uh, they're already there because they got to be there right it's mandatory that they're there and i just figured out a way since you're here you listen right because the attendance is mandatory but your attention isn't you can show up and not listen so yeah. i just figure out a way to make them volunteer their attention and poetry did that gotcha um, where in the country are you? Are you still in, in Las Vegas? Oh, you're in Vegas. Yeah. Okay. Is there uh, is there a large poetry community in Vegas? Well, Vegas is weird. Vegas, you'll go to an open mic in Vegas, and you might see somebody swallowing swords. Stuff like it's everything. You know, you go to an open mic somewhere else, and you just you hear poets. No, you go to an open mic here. Literally, there was a the first open mic I came to here. A dude went up on the stage with a chest. He was setting stuff on fire. He was swallowing swords. Then he was followed by a comedian. Then they was followed by a singer. Then you got a poet. Then you got a ballerina. So you go to an open mic here, you liable to see 40 different genres of art, right? So is the art scene huge? Yeah, the art scene is, 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 is well and thriving. Poetry 
is about maybe 30% of what you'll see. Do other art forms really feed you? I know for me, music inf heavily inf informs my poetry. I've used the two actually, but I get a lot of my inspiration from music um, and sound. Um, dance is inspiring for me. Do other art forms do that for you or what besides your personal experiences do, that, do other things like that feed, feed what you write? Yeah, absolutely. I'm a music fanatic, right? I'm a, as much as I talk about rap, I'm a hip hop head. Um, I love other genres of art. So music is uh, other genres of music. But, so music is, is definitely a large contributor. But art holistically, I like the freedom, right? Art is, is one of the freest things that you can be a part of. So I like the liberation associated with any type of art. Um, I mean, that dude couldn't walk in Walmart and swallow no sword. Only in front of us was he able to do that and get away with it, right? So, yeah, so... So I'm inspired by the freedom. Holistically, I'm inspired by the freedom. But if I had to pick a genre that's that's most inspiring for me, it's definitely music. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. The experience of writing your book. I'm asking this from for selfish reasons because I'm writing a book. Mm -hmm. And the editing process of writing the book what is really powerful for me because as an artist i recognized that i was very entrenched in my own voice my own way my own point of view and when i became brave enough to turn it over to somebody who i loved and trust and said tell me tell me what you think and then open myself up for the feedback i immediately was defensive but when I recognized what I was getting, it really, and I, I just decided this, that I was not going to say they pushed me. I'm going to say they pulled me because beautifully the sisters that are editing for me didn't say, you know, here, 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 here. Now go do, make what you can out of that and leave me on my own. No, they said here, here's what we think consider this think about this we're with you the whole way we're staying with you you could do this so i feel like they're pulling me not pushing me but it was challenging for me but powerful for me what was that process like for you in writing your book i didn't go through that because lazily and unfortunately i think lazily is a word if not it's going to be a word <laughs> it is <I> don't know. <laughs> And, and unfortunately, I did, I wrote a book because my daughter wrote one. My daughter was 15 and she wrote a book. So it's like, I don't have a book. She got a book. So I never aspired to be an author. I wrote the book because she had a book. So I didn't go through an editor. That's the reason the hard copy has typos. Hence the reason I encourage people to get the audio book because you can't hear the typo. Um, <laughs> but I have been in other situations where I've had to have somebody to prove something. So I know exactly what you're talking about. So for me, when, in other situations, what I had to do first is I have people who I'm associated with, but different people have different character traits. And I know some people who just like to be right. So they want you to be wrong so they can have an opportunity to be right. So, I, so yeah. those weren't the individuals who I was going to go to. Right. For there are some individuals who they want to correct you to see you get better. And if it was up to them, they would never find anything wrong. So I was very selective in who I went to based off of people's character. The next thing is, regardless of who I went through, I had to absolutely perfect the ability to, I guess, swallow meat and spit bones, take in what I felt was necessary for me and get rid of the rest. So it took a lot of discernment because sometimes there's no right or wrong. There's a million different ways to do things. And my way and their way may be different, but neither is wrong. So in that case, I'm not forced to change it based off of your perspective. Sure. Or wrong is this is the intended message and I didn't communicate well enough for the reader to get that message. Now I need to go back and make some corrections. So with all the feedback, I was just able to discern what piece of this do I really need to take heed to and what piece of this can I just listen to and, um, and, and not do anything with. But what I didn't do is I didn't get into back and forths with the person who I asked to help me. I, I gave them the right to have their opinion. And then I just did what I needed to do with the opinion once I walked off with it. I hope that addresses the question. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's extremely tough. Not extremely. I don't want nobody to tell me nothing about nothing I write. If you tell me you forgot a dot to I, I'm gonna get added to it. I might tell you it was an L. That was an L. <laughs> it wasn't an I. Right. 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 So, That's a new yeah, I. That's a new yeah. I created I created that Absolutely. I. I meant to do that. Yes, I understand. I need to take a break. I don't want to, but I have to. And when we come back, we're just going to finish up this great time that we're having on Love Art Life with Brother Obi West. Be right back. I was blessed to spend time talking with poet and published author Epiphany Divine about her book and her path to physical, spiritual, and mental health and growth on Let's Talk About Love, Art, Life. And I started realizing I got a lot of clarity, a lot of answers just by sitting in the silence. Um, I'm going, to, I'm going to confess. I'm going to confess one thing. It was a revelation I was coming to understand, and this is what I believe. I deeply believe this, that deep within me is a divine nature. The primary purpose of this podcast is to provide opportunities for self-awareness. This podcast does not constitute advice or services. While guests are invited to listen and or participate, listeners and or participants acknowledge that they are not being provided professional advice from the podcast or podcast guests. This podcast is for private, non-commercial use. Alteration or reproduction of this podcast without express permission is strictly prohibited. The statements and views of this podcast's guests do not necessarily reflect any agency, organization, or company that they work for, nor do they necessarily represent the views of the podcast and its creators. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Afro Queen. This is Love Art Life, and we are talking with my brother Obi West. And it's been fun and it's been informative, and I've been inspired. And before we close out this episode, I just want to ask my brother a couple of other questions. One I was inspired to ask because you said you wrote a book because your daughter had a book. So um, your daughter is an author. Apparently, um, if you don't mind me asking, how old is she, and what was her impetus to write a book, and did it? How much of it had to do with you? She's eighteen now. She wrote her first book when she was fifteen. It's a poetry book. She wrote her second one when she was sixteen. Um, so she wrote them back to back. And if you ask her, no. I remember she telling me maybe about three years before she wrote a book. She's like, "Daddy, poetry is boring." And then when she was 15, she was like, can you read something for me? And it was a couple poems. And I have no clue where they came from. She won't tell me where they came from. So um, she's a love lover. She loves love. So I think that, and what better way to express your love for love than poetry? So that, that may have been the influence. Um, yeah, I, I don't know where it came from. I just support it. Okay. Yeah. Understood, understood. Would you say that your personal community is full of other poets? Um, some of us are loners. Some of us are really social butterflies. Which one are you? Yeah, I don't have a circle. Uh, I know I know poets who I have a, a lot of respect for and who I call friends. But I don't have a circle of people. You know, some poets have a circle. They bounce their work off the same people every time. So I don't have a circle of poets. Uh, I don't even know if I have a circle of people. I'm very introverted. Um, kind of pop out the ground when I need to and then head back for recovery after that. Yeah, absolutely. So. I got you. I got you. It's not a question I have planned to ask, but as I'm talking to you, I'm wondering... Have you ever considered doing voiceover work? I mean, your voice is like, 
Yeah, I, mean, I have. Someone, a lot of people said that to me. And you know, after you hear something a hundred times, you kind of, you have to take heat, right? So I took a class. I took a voiceover class. I got a certificate for it. I created a demo. They, they were during the class, throughout the process, you created a demo. They sent me the demo. And I just hadn't had time to slow down enough to do anything with it. Okay. But at least you have entertained it. I have. Oh yeah, because I think that's a real that's a real option for you. For real, I um, uh, would like for you to let everybody know how they can find you, where they can see you, and get your work. Okay, absolutely. Everything is Ob West. Uh, Instagram is at Ob West. O B B I E W E S T. Website is www.obwest.com. My advocacy with the, con- the advocacy website is www.spokenadvocacy.com LinkedIn is OB West Facebook is OB West Twitter I, I wouldn't recommend you go to Twitter I absolutely just detach from any level of intelligence when I'm on Twitter um, yeah that's, I'm just free to be extremely ignorant so I have nothing wow. yeah nothing beneficial to say on Twitter okay <laughs> <laughs> The poem that we are going to play as we close out, I really wanted to share with everyone because for me, and not taking anything away from any of your other poems at all, I'm sure there's some that are probably even better than the one that I'm thinking of, but this one just really struck me because, and it's called Impediment, because the frame of reference from which it came to me was very creative. Um, it was um, it was powerful in terms of what not only what you had to say, but how you said it. I think it was just masterfully done. And um, I hope that when uh, our viewers see it, they'll see it from the same perspective as I do. But I just wanted to give you a chance to talk a little bit about that piece before we close out with it. Um, what was that experience like and what led you to bring it about? Impediment. Impediment is uh, it's about it's bringing awareness to the things that people who stutter what they deal with. And I think a lot of abuse is subconscious, right? It, it stems from a lack of awareness, right? If I don't know how something affects a person, if I don't have the emotional intelligence, when someone does a certain thing, I might stare in a way that feels abusive to them, even though I didn't intend to be abusive. So that kind of goes along with advocacy. Let me bring awareness to this. So now people who don't struggle with it or know how to behave when they're around it and they're not subconsciously doing something that feels abusive. So it was just pretty much me trying to do the best I can to stand in a gap for someone who didn't feel they had mm. the ability to talk about that thing themselves. I love it. That's excellent. And to me, that's one of the best uses of art, of any form of art, is to advocate and represent for make space for others, which is what so many of us as spoken word artists, as poets, as writers have the opportunity to do. And so I just thank you for all that you do with your work, but just more, even more so basically just for being, just for being, just for creating, just for, put, for putting out in the world what you put out into the world and how. Really, really appreciate you. Thank you so much for being with us. Absolutely. So, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Afro Queen is getting ready to sign out. Let's talk about love, art, life. I want to encourage you to continue to create, to continue to love art, to continue to talk about life in artistic ways, because I think that we are the ones who amplify the living experience through art. And it's so, so, so important that not only we do it, but we support one another, that we create bridges with each other, that we give each other inspiration. And so I'm gonna say until later, peace and love. We are love art life, deep love, soul art, authentic life. Peace y'all. Before I get started, I'd like to say for for warning for for all my listeners. I like to jokingly say my my tongue has has been diagnosed with Parkinson's, right? It's no fault of mine, but I have a fault line. 
in my voice box in my last conversation registered at about 8.0 on the Richter scale. Keep listening and you'll learn that I, I abused the first half of, of words like the alphabet killer. My, my speech isn't too lucid. Lu Lucifer has, has blessed me with a speech impediment that for, forces me to talk like an automatic weapon and every time I un unload, my target audience just bleeds with laughter. And when blood stains your, your self-esteem, it's hard to get the stench out. Anxiety tends to exacerbate the issue. Um, imagine being forced to face the walls of the world when every fifth word seems to be stuck at, at a standstill, sort of like my sentences are, are sitting in bad traffic. And most listeners have bad manners. Rather than letting me finish, they feel forced to finish my sentences for me. Well, I apologize, guys, if my impediment is pushing your your patience. Maybe next time I, I'll do a bad, better job of properly pronouncing the words, fuck you. With all my might, I, I fight to force these words out while your waving head just forces me to hurry up. Or oh, oh, you, you gawk in shock like you've never seen a tongue tied to an electric chair. Maybe if my listeners could just audible past the spasmatic activity, you may be able to hear the audio of my soul whimpering. And, and I got it. I understand. This is my handicap. Your hands are tied, but the best that you can do for it is it just ignore it. Just allow me at least one minute to, to feel normal within my brain abnormality. And I know, sadly, that may be too much of a task to, add, to ask half of you bastards. Excuse the brash adjectives. It's just awfully aggravating being being judged during during every conversation. Thank you.